Okay, so the goal at the end of this video is to be able to calculate the standard deviation and be able to, you know, explain what it means in this context of a problem. So the standard deviation actually is one of the most common statistics used to describe the spread of a distribution. And you may have thought that the five number summary is the most common, you know, way to describe a set of data. It's actually the co a combination of using the mean to measure the center and the standard deviation to measure the spread. So the formal definition of the standard deviation says that it's essentially a statistic that measures the typical distance of the values from the mean. So the statistic that tells you about how far all the sets all, all the other values in the data set are from the mean. And it's calculated by taking the square root of the average square deviation. So remember deviation means how, what you would think in real life, the, um, how far something deviates from something else, how far something is from something else. So when you square the square, a square deviation, when you square, you know, a deviation, you're gonna take the square root to get the deviation. Now we also, call this average square deviation the variance. Now the formula will look something like this. Here's a couple different ways to represent it. Now, at first it's gonna look intimidating, but it's actually not that bad. And this is gonna be very important throughout your statistics course. And if you're going to be going, you know, into, you know, any type of science, um, it could be, it could even be like psychology or sociology, you're going to be dealing with the standard deviation, like frequently. So um, you're going to um, gain a lot and it's actually really going to help you to gain some good insight on how we talk about data um, in the real world. So um, let's look at this formula and then um, I'm gonna talk about it just briefly and then I'm gonna do a practice problem. So um, we will typically use lowercase s represented by this, you know, a subscript x to represent the standard deviation of, you know, a set of values that we typically will represent in x. So here's the square root. Now these values, you know, x1, x2, x3, all the way to xn represent the data values. And see how they're subtracted from the mean? So when they're subtracted from the mean, these are the deviations. And when you square these differences, these are the deviations squared. So when you add them all up, it's you know the sum of the square deviations. And you're gonna divide this sum by one less than the number of values in the data set. So the one less than N, and then you're gonna square root this whole thing. Here's the formula in sigma notation. Remember, sigma means the sum of a set of, you know, values. And then um, here's, you know, the, the way we look at variance. Standard deviation squared is just the variance. That's why we say it's just the square root of the variance. So again, let's go through a practice problem because it really makes this stuff a lot easier to understand. So it's going to be kind of a weird example, but it's, it's relatively, you know, simple just to, you know, get our you know, intuition of standard deviation down. So here we have a set of foot lengths for a random sample of seven 14 year olds from the UK. So 25, 22, 20, 25, 24, 24. And these are measured in centimeters. So we're gonna calculate the standard deviation of the foot length and we're gonna interpret its meaning in context. So, so um, when you first calculate the standard deviation, um, I advise have it like a systematic organized approach. So, what I do first is, you know, set up a column that represents the data values. So XI. And this gives you a sense of what we mean by that XI value because we have seven values. X1 we could say is 25. X2 we could say is 22. X3 is 20. X4 is 25, X5 is 24, X6 is 24, and X7 is 28. 
Now, um, let's understand and recognize that you can have the same value for two different individuals. So don't feel like, oh, if a value repeats, like you have X5 and X6, they're both 24, that you don't need to write it down twice. You do, just like in real life, you can have two people that are the same height or two people that are the same weight. You're not just gonna like not count one of them. Okay, so these are those X, I values, X1, X2, all the way to Xn. In this case, N is equal to seven. And what we're gonna do is calculate the deviations first. So we need to calculate what X bar is. So X bar, you know, you add all these together, divide by N. So we're gonna add the sum up, divide by seven. So 25 plus 22 plus, 20 plus 25 plus 24 plus 24 plus 28. And you'll get 168. Divide that by seven. And we'll get 24 is the mean. Now, the deviations you know, are gonna be xi minus the mean, x bar. And we're gonna put those values in here. So we call them deviations because it tells you how far away these values are from the mean. So just think 25 minus 24, how far is 25 minus 24? We're just gonna get one then 22 minus 24, we get negative two because it's two, two units below. 20 minus 24, we're gonna get negative four. 25 minus 24, we get one. 24 minus 24, zero. 24 minus 24 again, zero. And then 28 minus 24 is four. Now, the positive values tell you that the how much greater that xi value is, and the negative value tells you how much less it the xi value is. So um, here's the thing. Um, since we have both positive and negative values, if we wanted to figure out the average deviation, you know, the idea would you know you the concept you can find an average is it taking the total and dividing by seven. But the problem is, is that since you have negative and positive values, it's possible that you can get a zero or it's possible you can get a very small number. Now, if you get zero, which could happen because the negatives to cancel the positives, it's then saying that the average distance that these values are from the mean is zero, which obviously isn't true. It just happens mathematically because you have positive and negative values. So this is why we wanna square these values. So we're gonna take these deviations and square them. So the next column, we're gonna have xi minus x bar squared. When we square them, we're gonna get positive values. So we square one, we're gonna get one. Negative two squared will be four. Negative four squared will be 16. One squared will be one. Zero squared will be zero zero squared zero and four squared will be 16. See, this is what these quantities are here. And we square them again because we want positive values. So since they're all positive, we can then, you know, find the average squared deviation of this, you know, of this, you know, column, because that's gonna give us, you know, a better sense of how far the values are from the mean. So we're gonna then add all these together, which is why we're adding them here. And this is what that sigma means. So let's go ahead, let's just add these. So we're gonna have the sum of, put that xi minus x bar squared. We're gonna get one plus four plus 16 plus one plus zero plus zero plus 16. That's what that is, one plus four plus 16 plus one plus zero plus zero plus 16. And we're gonna get 
21, 22 to 38. Now, we then take, that's what this total value is. So let's go to the next part. Let's go on, let's write this as. Sigma sub, the, our standard deviation square or the variance would be 38, that top value, divided by n minus one or seven minus one. So we take 38 divided by six. But since we want to find the standard deviation, we're going to take the square root of this quantity. So it's the square root, again, the square root of, this, of the variance, this is defined as the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is going to be the square root of 38 over six. And we're going to get approximately 2.5166 or 2.52. Now, a question that you could be asking, which is a good question, is why we why do we divide this by six? Why not by seven? Because there's seven values. Like in, when we figure out mean, we would divide by seven, not by six. So this is actually gets a little bit technical. We're gonna um, go in deeper into this in the later chapters. But the thing is with standard deviation, what we're actually calculating is the standard deviation of a sample which we use to estimate the standard deviation of the population. Now, if this was the entire population, then yeah, we would just divide by um, seven. But since this is a sample, we want to use the standard deviation of the sample to get an estimate of the true population standard deviation. And there's something called um, like the standard deviation correction error. Basically, it's, you know, if we were to just divide by seven, it would give us the standard deviation that that is biased it would actually make it um smaller than it would actually make it smaller than than it should be so um since it's smaller than it should be it would you know be a little misleading it would you know kind of not really give us a, a good uh, approximation of the true population standard deviation anyway so there's this mathematical proof and everything that shows that if you um were to divide the standard deviation of a sample by one less than the sample size, it actually gives you a much more reasonable estimate of the true population standard deviation. So um, we'll talk more about that later. I know um, right now it's kind of weird to think about, but, um, but just, just keep that in mind for now. Don't let it like stress you out. Okay, so then, so then how do we interpret this? And what does it mean in the problem? Well, this is just a value that gives you the typical distance that the other values or the values in this you know, set of data are from the mean. So let's word it like this. We'll say that the typical distance, whoa, the typical distance that each foot length is from the mean. Let's think is from the mean. Let's open my pencil. From the mean foot length, you can say. It's about 2.52 centimeters. Now, um, for now, in this chapter, we're just gonna use, you know, the word typical distance um, to, you know, kind of interpret the mean, to kind of interpret the standard deviation. Um, we're gonna learn later on in the next chapter and beyond a more specific way to um, quantify standard deviation and be more detailed on exactly what 
you know, it means in like a numerical sense for a specific setting. So now let's talk a little bit more about the principles and important concepts behind the standard deviation. Okay, so you're gonna notice that in a calculator, you're gonna have two different, um, two different ways that it's gonna represent standard deviation. It's gonna have this symbol called the sigma symbol, and it's gonna have one you know, with the S that we just showed. And that's because it has two calculations for the population standard deviation, which is the sigma symbol, and the, and the sample standard deviation. We use Greek letters when we're talking about true values, and we're gonna talk more about that later on. Now, remember, um, as I just mentioned, the population standard deviation is calculated by dividing by N, whereas the standard deviation of a sample is divided by N minus one. And again, that's because it's gonna give you a better estimate of the population standard deviation when you divide by N minus one in the sample. So only use this symbol when you have the entire population. Now, um, when you first learn about the standard deviation, you're probably gonna have you know, homework problems that your teacher or professor is gonna assign you where you have to do some calculations. It's gonna be a little tedious, but they're really probably only gonna be that for like an assignment or two um, because what's more important then you know, doing the tedious calculations of the standard deviation are understanding the concepts and properties behind it. So let's talk a little bit about this. So standard deviation, remember, measures the spread about the mean, and so it only should be used when the mean is chosen as the measure of center. It's always going to be greater than or equal to zero, and it's going to equal zero only in the case when there's no variability. Remember, what, let's think about what that means. If it says standard deviation is zero, that means that there's no difference in the set of data values. All the values are equal to each other. All the values are equal to the mean. So there's gonna be you know, no difference or no, you know, no, when you take you know, xi minus x bar, you're always gonna get zero. So it's when they all have the same value. Now, the, the unit of measurement, the standard deviation is gonna be the same as the original observation. It's not gonna be something that changes like feet to centimeters or you know, temperature from, from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. It doesn't do any of that. Whatever the original data is measured in, if it's feet, it's gonna give you the standard deviation in terms of feet. Now, one of its weaknesses, similar to the mean is that it's not resistant to outliers. So if you have it's like some very large values and some very small, small values um, in your set of data, it can, it, can, it can significantly affect it. It can be misleading because again, it's, 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 it's computed by using algebra. It's, used, it's computed by using that sum formula you saw. So be wary of that. That's why you only use it when you can use the mean. When you can't use the mean, it's probably because the data is skewed. So that being said, use the median IQR when you have a skewed distribution or when you have strong outliers. Only use the, the sample or the mean, you know, sample mean and the sample standard deviation or standard deviation when you have some, some, a distribution that, you know, you could say is roughly symmetric and that you can argue that it doesn't really have any outliers.